you know, yeah, you're part, part of the part of the struggle, as you know, is to get people to realize that there's there's a there's something there's something going on beyond your paycheck here. There's this cost beyond the paycheck. You know, I'm I'm on a Facebook with some of these right wing people, and they just they don't give it up. Um, you know, but I. I I give it up on them. I, my, my hope yeah, is really with, my, my hope is with the like you know kids, the younger the younger generation. I think they, they, they get it viscerally and intellectually and monetarily. You know they're the ones that are going to. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the great thing about it is you put it up and what what have you done to maintain them? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. I, I, I tap I tap on it every few months to make sure that they're working and you deposit your check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's, 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 it's so it's so uh, to me it's a, it's the most beautiful, elegant, subversive thing you can do. And, and, and yet there's so, so much resistance. People say, oh, that costs too much, I can never do it. And it's like, well, look at the real costs. I mean, wars, you know, the, right. we, look, we have three Middle Eastern wars going on right now. What, what do those cost? You know, it's, it's what like, are we at war for? Over. Oil. It's a, right. Ameri they, 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 they clouded in like, you know, American interests, we're protecting our American interests. Well, there's, there's, one, there's one aircraft carrier in the Middle East that's been tasked to do, to protect middle, U.S. Middle Eastern interests since the 1970s. And if you look at the total cost of, of keeping that one aircraft carrier out there, the, the ports, sending people to war, this time comes up to something like $6 trillion. That's $30,000 for every man, woman, child in America, easily. And, you know, that should be in the cost of, of your, when you go to your gas station, that should be figured in there. Right, but you, people you, don't want to make that change. To, well, but we, what I want to do is make that connection for people so that they connect the dots, so that they, they see the uh, kids getting their, their legs blown off. Uh, the, the environmental costs, the health costs, the, uh, the the tax costs of keeping these, you know, we want to quantify that so that you see that, you know, these, these solar panels are pretty damn cheap after you consider, you know, nobody, nobody died to put these solar panels on. Nobody's going to continue to die. We don't have to send anybody to war over these things. It's, just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. If, if flying, and at the same time you're doing landscaping and, and other yeah, there's a, you know, there's a lot of commotion out here, and it right. was, you know, from my, my end, it wasn't real sensitive to the neighbors, but it just sort of grew. I mean, we didn't intend to be working out of here, but then it just became, you know, we got entrenched. It was like, okay, it's, it became too difficult, too expensive to move. As, essentially, you want everything, every, every, every dollar you're spending on a movie, you see it up on the screen. You don't want to be spending tons of money on, you know, office space and, you know, other you know, other ancillary things that you do to run a business. And here, I, I was able to keep all the costs here. I, 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 you know, I was paying the rent. I was well, I was, able, I was pretty surprised when you were at Aspen that you did this all out of gold. This is all a, a movie about, you know, oceanography and that kind of stuff, but you have chosen to live in Boulder as opposed to other places that people make movies at. Right or 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 run an ocean based organization. <laughs> well, we, let's say you know can we, we're conveniently located between two oceans. The, the funny thing though is is you know the streets north of Boulder are alphabetized by trees. You know so it's iris, right. juniper. Yeah. So you know I'm on juniper. The next street over was uh, Lynn Chioka, who was the chairman of the board of the Coral Reef Association. Next block over was a guy that helped start Google Oceans. You know the other joke is that we we. Do, we we're doing the moving boulders to be near the, all the other oceanographic organizations. <laughs> you know, that has a branch here. Um, Interesting. It's, uh, and there's more divers per square, or perhaps there's just more divers per capita here than any other state, you know, uh, by percentage. And I think that's because people are more environmental in, in general and comfortable. Sure. There's more people biking and, and so on. And so you're. And you're not only, okay, you're not, we're not only producing a movie and running all your power for the house and the office, but you're also driving cars that off of that power? Yeah, we have two electric cars out there. One's a Toyota RAV. I mean, it's, it's old technology. I mean, it's, right. at this point, it's probably a dozen years old. It's, a, it's a, a 10 year old car, but the technology is at least 12, 13 years old because by the time we get to the design phase and actually manufacturing phase, so it's, but it goes 80 miles an hour, 120 miles on a charge. And the license plate on it says VUS, it stands for Vehicle Using Sun. It's the opposite of an SUV. And we also, we also have a, a Zen, it stands for Zero Emission No Noise. It's a, a neighborhood electric vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got that first, and we don't use it near as much as the, the RAV because the RAV is, you know, it's, you can go as fast as you want. Because yeah, so I was wondering about those neighborhood electric vehicles, the NEVs. Uh, the Zen goes 30 miles an hour? Or? 
You, can, you, you one could hot rod it so it could go thirty five miles an hour. I don't okay. know it would be would it be legal if one did that? But um, some people wouldn't be known to do that. It would not be the. Is there allowed to go thirty or twenty five? Twenty five in this town. But uh, mine goes pretty fast. And you're not the only. <laughs> you're not the only one that has one. Um, they're pretty rare in this town. Yeah. I, and I, again, I don't know why. I mean, because when people are paying four dollars for gas, you know, I, I, I've spent exactly fifty cents the last two years on gas in this town at a gas station, and that's to fill my my tires with air. I, you know, it's it's. <laughs> but the naysayers that I've talked to about electric vehicles, oh, they're, they're that's you're just running that on coal. You know, that vehicle is no better than a gasoline vehicle. But my understanding is, even if it, even if it was from coal powered plants producing the power, it's still cleaner than gasoline emissions. Right. It's energy. much more efficient. Much you more know, efficient. Electric, you know, the, the electric cars are so beautiful. They're so elegant. And the reason that they, uh, you know, the manufacturers don't like to do them is because there's nothing to repair with the, on the car. There's, there's one moving part in the engine. That's the rotor. And it's, you know, it, that engine's supposed to last 150,000 miles. I can be, you know, the amount of car I drive that car, I can be buried in it. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing that, that typically goes wrong with those cars except the, the other moving parts of the car would normally have the tires, the brakes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But, you know, it's, I, I've had zero maintenance on it in the last three years. Well, that wouldn't support the umbrella industry then. Auto parts industry. Well, right? yeah, yeah. You, you know, know I, I don't feel like I, I need to support the auto parts industry. You know, I mean, I, I feel like I'm trying to support the environment, and th there's other ways people can make money besides destroying the environment. I think that's true. <laughs> there's a lot of other ways to, you know, to, to, to create jobs. That's true. I mean, you know, people look at, you know, oh, you're going to put Americans out of job if you, you know, we get off of fossil fuels. No, you'll create, you know, gazillions more jobs. Uh, you'll <laughs> You'll, you'll probably put some healthcare workers out of work because right. yeah. uh, they won't have the, the same healthcare concerns. Hmm. But you know, it'll be transferred just to to the grid. It'll be you know, you look at all. The, I, I fly over Colorado, and you look at all those rooftops down there. You know, we live in we live in the Saudi Arabia of alternative energy right here in Colorado. We have more wind and more sun than than uh, we could power with our state and every other state around us easily yeah. with yeah. solar and wind. But the